On my daily quiz questions, I've asked a number of questions about the life of a packet. In other words, what are the source and destination MAC addresses for frames sent from PC1 on the left to PC2 on the right? What are the source and destination MAC addresses going to be at point A, point B, C, D, and E? This specific question is asking, what is the source MAC address of the ICMP echo reply packets at point C? In other words, this point when PC1 pings PC2. And various MAC addresses are shown, and there's an option saying no MAC address. Now, this specific question has caused a lot of confusion. I've had a lot of feedback about this question. So again, I'm going to discuss this question via a video. If I see that people are struggling with a specific question, what I'll do is create a video about it. So I've reproduced this topology in Packet Tracer. Here's PC1, here's PC2. We've got two switches and we've got two routers. What I'll do is connect to PC1 and let's have a look at the op cache. So op hyphen A or dash A. No op entries in the op cache at the moment. I'm gonna change Packet Tracer to use simulation mode. And then on PC1, which has IP address 10.1.1.1, I'm gonna ping PC2 with IP address 10.1.3.1. So on PC1, ping 10.1.3.1. Notice the first packet sent into the network is an ARP packet. So I'll send that into the network. Let's have a look at the ARP packet on the switch. On the switch, notice source MAC address is 000C1234-5678, which is PC1. The destination is a broadcast. PC1 is ARPing for the MAC address of the router. Notice source IP address is PC1. Destination IP address is 10.1.1.254. The reason for that is the PC is configured to use a default gateway of the router. So it's gonna ARP for the default gateway. It does that because the IP address of the PC is 10.1.1.1 slash 24 mask. Notice 255.255.255.0 and I'm pinging 10.1.3.1. Now in this case, it actually ran the simulation, so I'll reset it. So let's reset that simulation and do that again. The ARP entry, there are no ARP entries, so we'll run that again. So this PC is doing a logical AND of the destination IP address against its own IP address. This IP address is 10.1.3.0, if we look at the network mask. Local IP address is 10.1.1.0. In other words, this PC is on a different subnet to this PC. So it's gonna send the traffic to its default gateway. So let's make sure we're running simulation mode. We are, so I'll ping 10131. Notice ARP is sent into the network. So going back to where we were, this frame is sent by 10111. And we can look at the inbound PDU to see more details. So notice source MAC address is ending in 5678, it's this PC, PC1. Destination is a broadcast, it's ARPing, so the protocol is IP, it's an ARP packet, source IP address is this, target IP address is this. Outbound PDU is gonna be the same, that's gonna be forwarded by the switch, it's gonna essentially be flooded out of the network. But in this example, I've only got one connection, so it gets to the router. Inbound PDU is once again, the source MAC address, PC1, broadcast, asking for the MAC address of the router. PC1 doesn't know the MAC address associated with this IP address. Now the router will reply back using a unicast. It's learnt the MAC address of this PC, so it's gonna send a unicast reply to the PC telling the PC what its MAC address is. So it goes to the switch, switch forwards it to the PC, and now the PC's ARP cache will be populated. 
I can't demonstrate that here, but it's op cache is populated and then it sends an ICMP message to the switch. So notice, ingress, egress. In our quiz question, that's point A and point B. Point A, link from PC to switch. B is from switch to router. So at point A, inbound PDU. Destination MAC address is the router. The PC needs to send traffic to its default gateway to get to the remote network. At a layer three, source IP address will be this, destination IP address will be this. But on each hop of the way, when we're hopping across routers, assuming that it's ethernet, the MAC address will change. So destination MAC address is the router. Source MAC address over here is the PC. On the outbound PDU, this side, because this is a layer two switch, same destination, same source. Source MAC address PC1, destination MAC address the router. Notice the IP address. So on inbound PDU, it's PC1's IP address talking to PC2's IP address, this PC. IP addresses are not changed by routers unless you're using network address translation or port address translation. So they will remain the same, but notice MAC addresses here are the same on this side of the network, but it will change when they hop across a router. So just to prove the point again, at point B, source MAC address is PC1, destination MAC address is the router. So we send that to the router and notice the change at the router. This question tripped a lot of people up. What MAC address is used at point C? There's no MAC address because this is not using ethernet. This is a point to point serial link. So if we look at the configuration of the router, show IP interface brief, this IP address is configured on a serial interface. This is a point to point serial interface, show interface serial 010, the encapsulation used by default on a serial interface on a Cisco router is HDLC. HDLC does not use MAC addresses. So notice there is no source or destination MAC address. This is a point to point link. So we don't need MAC addresses. We don't need flooding. We don't need broadcasts. We don't need multicasts. We are essentially sending the traffic from one side to the other always at layer two. It doesn't matter what layer three protocol is used. So it doesn't matter if it's unicast, broadcast or multicast. It's a point to point link. It can only go from A to B or router one to router two. So we don't need all of that information. But notice the source IP address and destination IP address remain the same across the link because we're not using network address translation. So because there's no NAT, IP addresses remain the same, but notice the difference. Inbound layer two is ethernet two. We've got our source and destination MAC addresses. Outbound PDU is HDLC, it's not ethernet. So there's no MAC addresses between router one and router two. Doesn't matter which direction you're sending the traffic. But on this side, the router is going to create the ethernet frame. So layer two changes, inbound PDU, notice it's HDLC, outbound PDU, so at this point, point D, source MAC address is the router, a destination MAC address is this PC here. Now this router would have had to have opt for that MAC address if it didn't know the MAC address, at this point, it didn't in Packet Tracer, but for that to work, it would have had to have opt for the MAC address. Here we're using ICMP, so Packet Tracer skipped a step there. This router would need to opt for the MAC address of this PC for it to know what MAC address to set over here. So source MAC address is the router, destination MAC address is PC2 at point D. When we get to the switch, this is a layer two switch. So it's gonna be the same frame at layer two. Inbound is the router, destination 
is PC2. Notice MAC address 12348764. There it is. IP address remains the same, and that'll be the same at point E as well. So going back to our picture, at this point and this point, the MAC address remains the same because it's a layer two switch. So there we go. ICMP echo message gets to the PC. Now, I had one person ask me, what is echo? Now think of it kind of like this. If you've ever been in a cave and you shout, hello, in a cave, what do you hear back? You hear echo back. So think of this as saying, hello, PC, and it's sending a hello back again. Basically, you're saying hello to someone and they're saying hello back again. That's what ICMP echo and echo reply are used for. It's used to make sure that the other side is up. So I'm sending you an echo and then you send back an echo reply. So notice in this example, inbound PDU, ICMP message type is eight. Outbound message type is ICMP message zero. So we've got echo request, echo reply, Notice the IP addresses are swapped around on the inbound PDU, source is 10.1.1.1. Outbound PDU, source is 10.1.3.1. Just make it easier to read. On inbound, destination is 10.1.3.1, but on outbound, destination is 10.1.1.1. Basically swapping the IP addresses around Notice the MAC addresses have also been swapped, but the communication at layer two is to the router. Inbound MAC address is this, going to the PC. Outbound MAC address is from PC to router two. So we can see that in more detail here, and I'll just look at the outbound PDU. Source MAC address is the PC. Notice destination MAC address is this router. That'll be the same frame at point E as well as point D here. So in other words, it won't be changed because it's a layer two switch. Layer two switch is not gonna change the MAC addresses. It's simply gonna switch the packets from one interface to another. So notice MAC addresses remain the same at layer two. If we look at the layer three, source destination IP address remains the same. It's a reply from this PC to this PC. Okay, when it hits the router now, notice we are going from ethernet to HDLC. So here's layer two ethernet, here's layer two HDLC. So there are no MAC addresses. So again, inbound PDU, same as we saw before, PC two talking to the router, outbound PDU, no MAC addresses because it's HDLC. Source IP address, destination IP address remain the same, but the MAC addresses are removed or stripped because it's a different layer two encapsulation. When it gets to this side, we've got an inbound PDU, which is HDLC. Outbound is ethernet. So the source MAC address is this MAC address. Notice triple zero D one three three four five six seven eight. This MAC address. Then it's going to this MAC address of PC two. Source IP address destination IP address remain the same. When we get to the switch, so send it to the switch. At this point, notice the MAC address remains the same. It's from this router to this PC, both at point B as well as point A per my original question on Twitter. And when it gets to the PC, the PC is going to send another echo into the network because by default it's gonna send four echoes it looks like on Packet Tracer. So notice the first echo reply has been received back from PC3. Now if we do this again, another echo is sent into the network. 
So Packet Tracer doesn't show that because we haven't got our reply yet. But if I look at the packet here, notice inbound PDU is an ICMP echo message. We are sending an echo from 10.1.1.1 to 10.1.3.1, and that process will now just repeat. So I'm hoping that's cleared up some of the confusion or questions you may have had about how packets flow in this network. Now, if you want to download this packet tracer file, I've added it below this video. So download it and have a look for yourself. Packet Tracer is free software. You can also download it using the link below this video. Download Packet Tracer, import this topology, and try it for yourself. I want to wish you all the very best. 